how are the requirements given in the real time projects by the client hi i am m asif hussain from nohav academy in this video we will understand how a requirement will be received what is business requirement document what is functional requirement document in a practical setting the process of receiving a project requirements it typically involves interaction with the business users so what happens and what is the process that follows in the companies how, how are we going to receive those kind of projects from the client if we understand in a step by step procedure we have a business analyst we have managers we have data analyst and we have an entire team who will be working on a project so whenever a new project or a new requirement we are getting it from the client or a customer we will be first interacting with those client or customer a business analyst will play an important role where he or she will go through walk over through talk with the project uh, client who are dealing with the projects and all so these requirements are often conveyed through either mail or a supporting ticket so when this communication happens via mail it's straightforward you know we have all those requirements in a mail which is specifically mentioned however in the cases where there are we submit a very small ticket and we request a meeting proposal and where we start discussing about it so here we have something called as business requirement document and functional requirement document so what exactly is business requirement document and functional requirement document just i am going to show you a sample business requirement document what kind of points and key parameters that we have under business requirement document and from that document are we going to really understand the project requirements and all i am going to show it to you here so as you can see in the screen we have a business requirement document for a power bi project and uh, this is completely related to sales and marketing analytics dashboard so if we see we have a summary about the project what are the key objectives who are our stakeholders and what is the purpose of the project so until or unless we don't understand what are the key objectives the vision and the, and all those things about the project we cannot start working on it so even though though we have the objectives though we have the vision about the project it is very important to know what is the scope of the project so what exactly is the client expecting and what are the constraints and what are the assumptions that a developer or the team can consider about this particular project and what are the goals what are the goals of this particular project what is the short term goal and what is the long term goal about this project and in this business requirement document itself we have something called as functional requirement document where in the functional requirement document all the key technical points will come into the picture as what are the data sources that the client is about to give us the data and what are the data transformations and the modeling part that a developer has to do and what is the dashboard interactivity and how the dashboard should be interactive so that the developers the clients and the customers can also access to this particular dashboard and what are the dax functions we have to use and so on so on all these technical points that we will be having in this one those are called as functional requirement document but what about this this non functional requirement document so how should be the performance of a report if we have a report when a when a client or a customer is trying to interact with the particular dashboard or report that the developer has prepared if that particular report is not in a situation to interact and support with the what uh, clicks that a client or customer is doing it is very difficult so performance also plays an important role once we prepare a report what is meant by performance the interactivity the speed level the information uh, visibility you know the charts visibility the interaction part that the client is trying to do with the report or dashboard it should perform well in order to make the client's business understand in a meaningful way so all these comes under non functional requirement documents how what is the usability and all and what are the data quality issues what are the data security is my, the data the content that we have prepared in a particular report or dashboard is a, is it particular secure and uh, do we have any issues with this particular data once we share it to someone so all this kind of data governance and compliance issues also comes into the picture and integration requirements what are the types of integrations that we have to do should we get the gather the information or some other data sources from the third party can activity and so on and finally we have something called as training and support so once a particular dashboard and report is completed we need to train the end users that how we are going to use it what are the key parameters we have used 
used and how we have to interact with the dashboard and report and so on so we have even the project timeline this is very important you know so with sla that we call uh, in a technical terminology so uh, what is a project timeline and what duration that we are going to complete the project how many days how many months how many years and how many quarters are we going to take in order to complete this project and what are the deliverables every week what is the deliverable that you are going to show to the client or every month that what are the deliverables that you are going to the you know, uh, client and all all those comes under project timeline and once the complete uh, things are analyzed and uh, known about the project and about its requirement we decide the budget so how many employees will be working on it what is the budget uh, requirement for it how much budget should be released and uh, all those things comes into the budget and resource requirement part we even have something called as risk management now this is very important every developer who is working in a it sector or in any other organization if i would like to talk about risk identification is very much important what is the risk that i am going to get while i am doing the project what is the risk i am going to get if i uh, try to use this kind of uh, data sort or this kind of transformation a developer should know so identification of risk also plays an important role and we have something called as change management you know impact analysis and process of handling the changing request as per the after the approvals of the client or our manager whoever is dealing with the project and approvals once all those 12 parameters are completed we need to find out the approval you no know, uh, approval from approval signatures without approval no one can start a project so let us look into uh, all these certain parameters little bit in detail uh, if i consider so i have taken a project called sales and marketing analytical dashboard if we have we will go with the project overview what exactly the sales and marketing analytical dashboard project aims to implement and what is the purpose of this power bi project what are the key objectives of this project and increase the visibility into sales and marketing data to improve the decision making based on the data driven insights and you no know, collaboration and communication with the sales and marketing team you know what these are the key objectives and the stakeholders who are the stakeholders in this particular project the sales manager marketing manager data analyst you know it department supporting team all these comes under the key stakeholders who will be involving in this particular project with the team and also what is the scope of the project in a scope items if i would like to talk about then uh, the sales data from various channels that we are going to get it you know marketing campaign performance about the metrics and all that uh, we would uh, we will have in the sales and uh, customer demo demographics and behavior data with the completely depend upon what kind of columns and what kind of information that uh, we are going to get from the client when i am talking about the sales and marketing and finally the power bi dashboard and uh, that we are going to prepare for sales and marketing uh, analytics so out of scope items that we have is detailed uh, function no uh, financial data uh, not related to sales and uh, non marketing related customer support data you know what is this non marketing related customer support data so we have such kind of things in our uh, business that we don't market is you know in a much way but we request the support from the customer such as if we take you know feedback of this we don't you know, marketize it you know but we take the feedback of the customers and increasing uh, by the sales or the product of our uh, uh, business that we are going to deal with it what are the constraints and uh, assumptions that we have the data visibility and quality uh, that we are assumed to and uh, project goals what is the short term goal in the short term goal implementing the power bi for basic sales and reporting so once we come into a proper uh, structure like how exactly uh, the dashboard need to be prepared and uh, who are the end users who are going to use it are they going to feel any difficulty to use this particular dashboard if i make it so complicated and also all those things comes under the short term goal and in the long term goals is we need to expand the dashboard functionalities based upon the user feedback so user feedback user might be the client or the customer the end user who are going to use this particular report that we are going to prepare and under functional uh, requirement as i told we have a data sources so now is the sales data from crm systems so marketing data that we get from the campaign platforms we do a lot of uh, campaigns for marketing we use social media we use emails you know we use posters banners you know all these kind of things what are the marketing data that we are going to get it and customer data from the central database who are the customers from which region from which country how many orders how many products so what is the discount that we have given how many quantity that they have uh, no, 
bought that particular product all those kind related to customer data so data transformation modeling which is very important part and very interesting part that we have in power bi so transformation of data is very much important the data that we receive from the customer the data that we receive from the client is obviously uh, it is not a clean data you know it is not a structured data many things will be missing many things will be mismatched most of the data will be up and down so we need to transform the data and we need to clean it very accurately and we need to develop the data models to support this complex analytics part and if some information is missing yes power bi has a very good uh, uh, dax functions and using those dax functions we can extract the information you know we, we can find out using calculate and all and uh, we have a data visualization which is which plays a key role that's why power bi is being used and uh, we need to create visuals for the sales and performance that we have and we need we have to develop charts and graphs from the marketing roi perspective uh, because what are the charts and what are the graphs that we are going to prepare obviously that is going to create a lot of impact to the client or customer because by looking at the information that we, we create from the charts and graph itself a client or a customer will understand how their business is going on what are the trends that they have in their marketing and sales so interact dashboard interactivity is very important obviously any dashboard that we prepare that should not be one way it should be two way you know dashboard should also give some valuable information and customer also should interact with the dashboard in order to find out what information he or she requires from the dashboard and the report distribution or obviously uh, once a developer prepares a report he will not or she will not keep the report with them we have to share the report so we need to have such a kind of feasibility that we need to enable the sharing of reports and dashboards and we need to collaborate multiple features from the team discussions so access control and security we need to restrict the access based upon the roles where our role level security plays an important role and we need to implement encryption uh, for uh, sensitive data when i talk about the non functional requirement so dashboard load Loading uh, time should be under five seconds. This is very much important. When we are using a dashboard, so when we are using a huge data in it, obviously the performance of a dashboard or a report it will take some time, and we need to make sure that the dashboard when we are trying to open it up and we are going to see it, the, it should take under five seconds. If it is taking more than five seconds, obviously we have a very poor performance of our report and dashboard, and we have to work on it by reducing our new measures, by reducing our uh, unwanted visuals that we have, and so on. So even we have a performance analyzer that we can. happily use in power bi desktop and uh, there come when comes to the next point of scalability we need to design the system to handle increasing the data volumes the reliability you know system availability of, of at least 99.9% and uh, compatibility of a report if i talk about with you know uh, it should be very compatible with the web browsers most of the uh, once when we try to share the report or a dashboard and um, obviously we have to go with the web version uh, where i can directly go into power bi service or by web version if i want to go I go with app.powerbi.com and the usability of a report it should be initiative you know it initiative user interface and it should provide tool tips and guidance for users what exactly this is what information we have how we need to go with it what is the next step so all these kind of uh, things that we need to have it in a user performance and when i talk about the next uh, data governance and compliance part yes it is very important data quality implement data validation check that the data is correct or not it is genuine or not how it is if it is having any issues any errors any empty informations yes all those comes under the data quality and when i talk about the data security obviously any client any customer why should we talk about kind of a customer if we consider me or if i consider you all we are very much secure about our data we will not give the mobile phones to anyone we have passwords for it because the data that we have in our mobile phones the contacts the images and all those are very much important for us that we, no one should hack or take some information out of our personal use right in the same way the reports and the dashboard the data set that we use also we need to have data security and privacy for it so in the same way we have compliance with the regulatory standards you know we have to ensure that the gdpr compliance for the customer data is uh, enabled or not so integration requirements if i talk about you know integration with the existing system yes we need to use the crm and marketing tools that uh, we have to integrate the data with and we need to extract the data from central data warehouse if uh, if uh, we have a data warehouse uh, usage in our particular project if there is a requirement this is particularly optional then a third party integrations if it is required yes we need to use a third party integrations to you know extract the data from the different data sources 
ट्रेनिंग एंड सपोर्ट इज वेरी 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 मच रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज वंस ए डेवलपर प्रिपेयर प्रिपेयर रिपोर्ट यू नो एंड यूजर शुड नो हाउ शुड ए पवर बी आई बी यूज एंड हाउ दे हैव टू इंट्रैक्ट विद द पर्टिकुलर रिपोर्ट एंड हाउ दे हैव टू क्लिक ऑन ए स्लाइसर्स एंड हाउ दे हैव टू यूज दट पर्टिकुलर चार्ट एंड ऑल एंड लुक इन टू द इन्फॉर्मेशन वट एक्जैक्टली दे वॉन्ट एंड ऑल सो वी नीड टू गिव द ट्रेनिंग फॉर द एंड यूजर्स दट इज फॉर श्योर एंड द सिस्टम मेंटेनेंस एंड सपोर्ट वी नीड टू एनेबल अ हेल्प डेस्क फॉर यूजर सपोर्ट टिल देयर टाइम द क्लाइंट्स और द कस्टमर और द end users are habituated in order to use our power bi uh, dashboard or report that we have prepared for and the timeline yes this is very important when are we going to complete and what is the milestone and when are we going to implement power bi what is the tentative date and user training sessions when are we going to train them and what is the dashboard roll out by what time are we going to roll out the dashboard and that particular date also we have to give it in this one if i talk about the deliverables yes data integration plan what is the plan that we are going to integrate with and what is the dashboard and what is the report and when are we going to complete it the training materials the user feedback reports very 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 much important is feedback reports without considering the feedback we cannot jump into uh, the productivity part and all if we talk about the dependencies availability of required data source that we have in our particular data set and user availability for training sessions that we need to look into it out of all these part you know we have a requirement we got the data quality issues we got the timeline we got all those things now what is the budget this plays a very important based upon the budget we will have a team you know team members so five members four members different technical aspects so all those comes under the budget and resource requirement how many uh, people need to be deployed in a particular project to do what kind of technical persons we need to have in order to complete the project and how much budget are the client or the customer is going to release for this project all those need to be considered and finally coming to the risk management yes identification of the risk what is the risk that we are going to get when we are starting the product till the end of the particular project so we can talk about the issues that we get majorly from data quality you know the re uh, the resistance to change among the end users the potential uh, delays in data integration we get lot of delays we get some we get the information some missing information from the client or customer very late you know all these kind of issues and risks that we need to sort it out and uh, if i talk about the you know mitigation uh, strategies implementation data validation we need to establish a very clear communication channels between everyone among a team with the client and so on in order to smoothly function in in completing the particular project or a report if i talk about the change management so it is the point is we need to submit the change request through the designated system this is very important we are if you are going to change something and it is very simple and we all know that it is not allowed to do any sort of changes with the original data that we receive from the client and yeah if it is really required and what does the change that we have and it should go through a proper channel with lot of approvals and all so impact analysis we need to assess the impact on timeline and budget and uh, we should make sure that everything is completing as per plan and schedule and finally we need to get the approval from everyone and what kind of approval who should approve it how many people should approve it all the stakeholders should accept for it for the budget for the timeline for the team for the technologies that we have to use and all so the all comes under the approval once it is approved then the particular project will be started up so this is how a requirement that we receive from the client one through raising a ticket directly giving the information through mail or by giving a brd and frd which is business requirement document and functional requirement document proper way of writing the requirement is business requirement document itself so many of the customers and many of the clients they even give us some of the uh, clues and hints how we need to uh, and what kind of dax functions we have to use in order to get these requirements from the project and all so this is how uh, everything goes with it so your first step will be you know getting the requirements understanding it and then you when you are starting the etl process where you extract transform and load the particular project and start doing the visualizations all these things you know that that we need to care with it so we regularly we oftenly get the project requirements and uh, data sets through excel sheet and excel file if client provides it in that's fine but may, if the data is greater than 1 gb and uh, the huge data is there obviously we have to extract the data from uh, cloud storage and uh, from different data warehouses from uh, uh, databases and so on and uh, so this is how uh, power bi requirements will be received in the real time uh, from the client's perspective what is business requirement document what is functional requirement document so thank you for choosing know how academy as your source for it knowledge we are always here to help you to navigate the tech world 
if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out it's been a pleasure interacting and sharing this information with you stay curious and keep learning